brilliant. Um, so this morning we have um, our guest speaker is Jacques Flores from Utrecht University. Um, thank you very much, Jacques, for joining us today. Um, just a little information about Jacques. Jacques is RDM consultant at Utrecht University and he assists and supports research, uh, researchers across all faculties with all aspects of data management from storage to privacy and data publishing. And Jacques has PhD in neuroscience and studied zoology and philosophy during his bachelor's at UBC, UBC Vancouver in Canada. And Utrecht University is currently um, subscribed to our basic package where they get the admin privileges and access to the back end um, of DMP online. So if that's right, Jack, um, I'll just leave the floor for you. And we are looking forward to hear what you have to share with us. Well, thank you so much. What a, what a nice introduction, Magdalena. Can you guys hear me okay, first of all? Yep. Wonderful. Okay. Well, yeah, um, I guess I've already been introduced. So I'll go ahead and introduce how we use uh, DMP at uh, Italk University. Um, so it, we started about two years ago, I think. And the way it's been set up is that we don't actually uh, make people use it. So it's not mandatory at the university but uh, we do recommend it and we basically post it as much as we can so we get uh, researchers to use it. Uh, it started off a little bit slowly, so not a lot of people were signing up, mostly because they didn't know about it. Um, but over the years, we've just seen that the amount of users increase quite a bit. So we're now up to about five to 600 users um, and somewhere around uh, 600 or so plants. So it's going pretty well. And what we're trying to do next is try to make it more of a st streamline it into the way which researchers work. So especially for first year PhD students, um, we know that without making it mandatory, if we simply uh, make it part of their courses when they start out as a PhD, which they have certain obligatory courses, and we just recommend that it show it as a way to organize yourself and to um, basically adhere to, um, to the funder mandates by just going into this particular platform that it'll get a lot more use and it'll come not from us forcing them to use it, but just by them realizing that this is a good way to achieve uh, the other things which are mandatory, which are, you know, you should have a, a DMP plan and uh, not necessarily through DMP online. So that's one of the ways that uh, we're, tr we're trying to work towards. And we're still trying to stay away from making it. They, they have to have everything in DMP online, but we just want them to see it for themselves and realize that it is actually um, going to help them out in the end. Uh, apart from that, we're, I'm, you know, we I haven't really used the API when it comes to um, to DMP online. We haven't had to use it. It's mostly a thing. Uh, most of the usage statistics, especially now that I've known that they've had quite a bit of an update on that, it, it's quite fantastic and it really caters to our needs of just if we need to find something, we can do it through there. Um, so we haven't, I haven't really delved into it, but I really think in the future, if more people start using it and we really start using the search queries, I think it'll become quite useful. It's one of the things that I also myself recommended a lot to, uh, to researchers. It's just that it also gives me a lot more control and understand what kind of DMPs are, are going around, uh, what are the subjects and so on. So that's a little bit of a background of what, I, what I've done with it so far. Um, what we are looking forward to is the conditionals. Uh, I think that that comes up so many times, maybe it's not even worth mentioning, but I think that's going to be really cool and I'm really happy that that's, uh, you know, uh, coming shortly, I hope. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jack. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if anyone wants to unmute if they have questions. I think some of the things you're doing about building into workflows is it's very similar to other universities. I know Manchester had done work around that. Um, and yeah, others have been picking up on the API to pull out certain details they can't get from the stats, like alerts to new plans. Um, but I don't know if people have reflections on questions for Jack or things that they've done that are similar. If there is nothing, you can always just, you know, either unmute yourself as we go, or maybe um, if you can think of something as we go on, maybe you can just um, send us a message in the message and we can pick up. Um, no pressure uh, to speak if, if there is nothing yeah. you want to add. Uh, yeah, but thank, thank you, Jack, very much. Um, yeah.
I have one quick question actually just about um, you talked about building things into first year courses so in terms of the DMPs are they mandatory for your kind of PhD or HDR students in the Netherlands then? Yes well it's mandatory simply um, to have one uh, as a researcher okay. um, but it's it's not done right uh, and we're yeah. trying to get it to be done but not by using the stick too much, by just making, yeah. you know, showing the carrot rather. Uh, so yeah. we know it's going to take a lot longer, but we'll see. Yeah, I think actually some unis, I know at Glasgow, um, they've been using the PhD students as a way to try and um, get supervisors more aware of it and to build better practice across the research community as a whole. So I think working with people who are kind of, you know, at the earliest stage of their career can then help um, feed things through. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I even use it for courses. So I give sometimes master courses or bachelor courses where they have to do a small research thing. And yeah. I just introduce it to them there because they're the ones that are going to become researchers in the future. And yeah. it's also a nice way to have it all together for the teachers as well. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jack. Can I ask a quick question about building it into your other sort of systems are you doing this by just getting people sorry it's rosie at the university of sheffield yeah. are you doing this by just getting people to download it and then manually upload it to other systems or um is it just a sort of stated part of the workflow one of the things we've started thinking about is it's now mandatory for our phd students to create data management plans and we've been thinking about is there a better way we can do this than just asking them to download a PDF and upload it with their um, with their sort of review report or whatever it is that they're doing. So are you, do you have more automated ways of doing it or is it just a sort of download and then upload to another system? So do you mean for the data management plans? Uh, no, we, uh, we go in good faith. So it's mandatory, but we don't try to collect all of these data management plans. Um, we simply don't have the means to be able to keep track of all of that uh, if, if it was actually being done uh, well. Uh, so DMP Online is one way in which you know they can go in there, but even if they uh, create something in DMP Online, it's not that we're checking everybody what they're doing. Uh, we'd like to you know leave some autonomy to the researchers. Yeah, I think just following up on that, Rosie, it'd be really good from our perspective to try and help pilot some of those things. So if you are looking at ways, you know, to exchange across the systems, um, I'll talk later about a hackathon that's coming up. But, you know, we um, conform with the DMP common standard and we're looking at use cases that we can apply to test that system integration. So you can already get like the plan in JSON from the API, but but potentially we could have kind of link throughs between different systems. Cool, thanks. Okay. Do you want to move us on, Magdalena? Or? Yeah, we, we can move on. Again, if you're having just a question or a thought, um, just feel free to interrupt us. And um, this is being very informal, so don't feel like you can't speak up if you want to. Um, so we'll just give you a few updates with Sarah. Um, I'll just start, majority of you are most likely aware about our DMP online training taking place now remotely on the 23rd of April. Um, and there is still time to register. Um, I'll just share the link in the chat with you. Uh, we were originally planning a user group in London, which is unfortunately not taking place due to the current development of the um, Coronavirus, uh, but um, we, we so we are not going to have a user group, but this is just going to take a form of a training. Um, there is an agenda in the link and um, for our enhanced clients um, in your contract, it says you have two free places for trainings available. And for our basic subscribers, I think it's 50 pounds per person. And we offer discounts if there are three or more people registering at your university. Um, and I don't know, Sarah, whether you would like to pick up with uh, some of the other items for, from the updates. Uh, yeah, 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 sure, I can do. Um, so as, as Jack had mentioned, I know conditional questions is something people have been keen to get in very soon. And it's taken us longer than we thought because we had to, to rework some things. Uh, but that's all through UAT now um, and will be demoed on the 23rd. Um, we're just discussing with the devs, you know, like how to how and when to deploy so we should be able to in the next couple of days to give you a definite date of when that will be pushed out 
Um, so good that that's all there soon. Um, if you want to test it, we can we can point you um, at the dev site to to have a look um, at that. But it shouldn't be long until it's actually out live. Um, the research uh, organization registry is the other thing we wanted to talk about. We've been doing some work in this whole vein of machine actionable DMPs um, to try and use more standardized ways of recording things. So rather than just creating, I mean, our original list of organizations, um, you know, came, it was like a standardized UK list, but then we've had a lot of um, international use. And as new organizations have come on, we've just added them to our database. But what we've done here is some work with RAW, which is like a, a international registry of organizations so that we have a controlled value for each of these um, institutions and a proper identifier and that's so that we can link things up much better. There's actually a blog post that our colleague Maria has put out about this raw work um, and it's available on the, the test site. Um, I might actually just share my screen. Oh sorry, I think you need to approve that Magdalena um, and I can just give you a, a very quick um, look at how this works and where it works within the system. Uh, let me just come to choose the screen to share. Um, so hopefully you now see my main screen and I'll just open um, our test site which is dmponline-test um, and the raw work is anywhere that you have the organization. So when you come to, to register at first there's a type ahead box and if I start typing in like Eddie, I get various things with that in the name. So like Edinburgh, the raw search is a little bit um, strange because as you add more letters, you get completely different lists. Um, so there's a little bit of clunkiness there, which we've not been able to get around because it's just how it works from the API. Um, one thing we, we have added in, uh, I'll try and think of an example that we've maybe done this on I'll go back I think you might notice yeah we've sometimes added in um, the country like United Kingdom or we've added in URLs like eddie.org just to help people disambiguate um, you know entries that seem the same um, and we've done a mapping between this I'll just kind of go into the tool We've done a mapping between this and our existing database entry. So when you go to, actually, you'll now see all the organizations because I'm an ad, super admin. Um, but if I go to like one of the organizations, um, what you'll see here is the identifiers that um, are there. So when you have an entry in RAW already as your organization, you'll see yourself linked here and can validate that that's correct. There are some organizations that I think aren't in RAW, so certain funders or you know different types of organizations um, aren't in there, but we're working with them on a process of how we can add organizations if they're not already registered. Um, and the main places this shows up in the interface, um, it's on the edit profile page. Obviously, you've got the organization here. And when we have users um, that are from an organization, um, it also comes up in the create plan. So this is pulling um, the list of existing users we have. So not necessarily the full raw list. Um, so it's a, a subset, but obviously things that are the proper raw identifiers rather than um, just a, a name that we've typed in. So what we're going to do at the moment, we've got this out on our test site and we're going to um, obviously share it with you now, but we're going to email around um, different users and just encourage people to have a look at this let us know what they think before we push this live and um, we can also give you a set release date for that so that's a, a quick intro to the raw work um, the other thing i just added to the agenda this morning there's a hackathon that's going to take place in may um, for it's run by the RDA, the RDA Europe project um, by colleagues in Vienna. And the hackathon's meant for anybody. You don't have to be a, a developer, although obviously we want people who develop the tools there. So our developers will be attending and I think various other tool providers. Um, what we want to do is try and understand the different use cases. Um, so do some mappings to the machine actionable DMP, maybe map existing funder templates to that. Um, think about what kind of information people want to exchange between systems and how we can develop those workflows and try and actually develop some integrations during this hackathon. 
so there's a registration page if you want to register um, and it's for people from various different backgrounds so if you're um, an administrator or somebody who's working with researchers you might have some ideas about the the types of functionality you need and then hopefully they're they're things we can get working on during the two days i think there had been a question in chat maybe while we were talking Mm -hmm. uh, is there so a metadata hand. schema yeah so um so this rda um rda group it was called the rda common standards for dmps um and they have essentially it's like a metadata schema um standard so they have a an output um which is specifying what should be in a machine actionable dmp um and how you represent that so the kind of json output you'd need um so i'll put a link in our document to their output um which uh, this is what the workshop will be around it will be about mapping to this okay thanks manuela um so i'll add that i don't know if you want to carry on magdalena yeah we we can carry on um smoothly um for those who have missed uh, i do recommend you to subscribe to our newsletter because um sometimes when we run our user groups i tend to find out that these are missed and um our newsletters are quite a good resource to see um what is coming out or work we have been working on or any updates and we do short either how-to videos or tutorial videos about existing functionalities the how-to videos are normally um short videos about our new functionalities so um for those who are not registered to the newsletter um i, I recommend you to have a look our drop-in sessions tends to be announced two or three months also in advance in there so it's a it's a good resource for dmp online um information um, for those who have also missed, um, last month we were having a drop-in session with Michelle Harikaran, uh, who is a data support manager from St. George's University in London. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, we are putting these recordings to YouTube. Um, so I just shared a link with all of you in the chat and there is a whole i don't know how to call it a playlist of videos um with these drop-in sessions so if you want to have a look at some previous ones um definitely do so i just shared the other link in the chat as well um we we had a guest speaker today jack which was absolutely great and amazing and thank you so much for sharing um how you go about using dmp online and the Turkey university and sharing all of your knowledge and um, i believe these are quite valuable and nice uh, ways for us to learn from one another and we are always looking for new speakers so um if you'd be interested to volunteer uh definitely do so um again sharing a link uh in the chat so it'll be much appreciated if um you you could be able to volunteer for us and thank you for some of you who are actually already lined up for the months to come um it's it's a great help from you um so i don't know whether we could just open the space for some questions if there are any or some points or anything you would like to raise yeah, if you have questions either to Jacques or about the things like that. I think most people are familiar with the con conditional questions functionality. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've got questions about that or RAW or any of the other events and things coming up, just let us know. You're all so quiet. <laughs> today. I had a question. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, so about the DMP online test. Um, I, I cannot log into this because I use um, the same connection from a different server. So I use Surf to connect to DMP online normally, and it doesn't allow me to do this. Uh, can I just make like a, a random account that's not connected to my university and be able to log in in that way? Uh, yeah, you can do. Although Surf um, should work on that. I thought single sign-on should work mm -hmm. on this too. Um, but yeah, you. So on the test and on our dev site, um, you can create <clears throat> any kind of random information. We push the data from live to these periodically so that you've got your user account. So um, it should work in. It should work for your usual user account. But we can check why the sign on with the credentials doesn't. 
So apologies if you can't get in. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. The other thing you could do if you know, because um, your account, the single sign-on credentials are linked to a DMP online account. So you could just put in your email and do forgotten password and just reset the password. Um, ah. All right. Yeah, um, not sure whether there are any other points or uh, thoughts from the rest of you. Don't feel the pressure. Um, I can just sum <laughs> up. Um, so thank you all again very much for joining us today. Um, it was lovely to have you all. Um, I just shared a link. Um, if you're not following us on Twitter, I'll definitely do so. Um, we have a Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook account. And as I mentioned before, I highly recommend uh, subscribing to our newsletters. And um, we are having a next drop-in meeting on the 27th of May. Um, unfortunately, one of our lineup speakers um, had an injury. And so I do not have a confirmed speaker for the next month, but as soon as I do, I'll share um, who it is and from which university. And it will be on the 27th of May, um, half past 10 in the morning. So thank you again all uh, for joining us. Uh, we are very much looking forward. Some of you will be joining us on the 23rd of April for the DMP online training. And um, for those of you who have not registered um, and still want to join us, definitely do so. The registration, I think, closes on Wednesday evening. So there is still plenty of time. And mm -hmm. thank you all. Yeah, thank you, thank very, you very much. much. Yeah. Enjoy the rest Thank of your days. Thank Bye -bye. you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thanks.